Hello YouTube land, it's Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter. I'm back! Uh, we went away for the new year. Um, we were gone for I think 10 days. Um, we went on a cruise, uh, courtesy of my father-in-law. He wanted the whole family together, and there's 10 of us, immediate family, um, and he paid for the bill. <laughs> It was um, an amazing vacation. Uh, as our kids get older and they start moving off, uh, it gets harder and harder to have family time. Uh, so my daughter flew in from, well actually she used to live in St. John's up until about a month ago. She has a new job and she had to move provinces again. So she is now in New Brunswick, Fredericton, New Brunswick. I think. <laughs> anyway, I've never been there, so this is going to give me an opportunity to do another girls weekend away and look for more local yarn shops. But anyway, uh, she flew in Christmas morning. We had to pick her up at the airport at 6.30 a.m. on Christmas morning. Anyway, uh, we had our Christmas uh, together and then the following day we all flew out uh, down to Fort Lauderdale. And then the following day, we got on a boat and toured the Caribbean. We did Turks and Caicos, uh, Dominican Republic, um, Nassau, and then other another island, private island uh, owned by the cruise cruise line, uh, also in the Bahamas. Uh, yeah, and we had some days at sea. Uh, me personally. Not so much, uh, and my husband too, we're not cruisers. We find that, um, just, I don't know, I'm, I, I, if my ideal vacation is going to a new city and checking out their museums, checking out old parts of town, checking out where the locals live and eat, uh, not so much of the touristy things. And this trip was all touristy. A lot of sun, a lot of sitting around in the sun. I am not a sun person, so I was the one with the big hat and in the shade. <laughs> um, my girls, on the other hand, are sun worshippers. They loved it. This was their most amazing vacation. Uh, although I do have to say, on a cruise, the best part of the cruise is the food. I gained five pounds on this cruise. Um, the food is top-notch it was really really was good and I got introduced into something new turkey bacon I never tasted turkey bacon before I always thought it was a what an odd thing but oh my god I'm addicted to it now so I really have to go and uh, source out some turkey bacon because the stuff I was addicted <laughs> every day I had to have it um, what else we like I said we had some fun oh the best part of the trip the excursions we did a few excursions we did um, uh, half of the group went snorkeling and the other half went to do, we went to do a chocolate tour. So there's a, a, um, I don't know what you call it, a, a group of, um, women who are impoverished got together and said enough is enough, we're building this, we're going to build this company and they grow their own, they plant their own cocoa trees, they, um, do everything from, from growing the cocoa trees to making chocolate. Um, so we went, we got to plant, we got to taste what real cocoa uh, uh, beans look like. They're about this big and you crack them open and inside there are the seeds, the cocoa seeds, which are used to make uh, chocolate, but they're covered in um, like a fruit of some sort and you got to taste it and it's like a cross between a banana and a mango. So, a bango. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what it tasted like. And then they said, don't chew on the seed, don't chew on the seed, because it's very bitter. I love bitter. So I had to chew it. And it was delicious. If you like bitter uh, kind of flavors, you'll love it. I It, it tasted like a, a bitter almond. And, uh, and then we got to don some hair nets and masks and, and gloves and we got to make chocolate uh, and it was it was amazing. We got to bring home some of the chocolate we made. It was it was great. Um, again, I like Laurel says, I can't swim so snorkeling was out of the question for me. 
So that was one excursion. Another excursion that I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed was doom bugging. Doom bugging or, or driving doom buggies. They took us on, and I can't remember the island, um, they took us on dune buggies throughout the whole island, up and down, on the beach, everywhere. It was so much fun. And I was with my son, Nathan, and uh, so we were supposed to switch. It was two people per dune buggy. And we got halfway, and I said, do you want to drive now? And he's like, no, I'm good, because he, he videotaped a lot. He, he, had, he has this, what they call a gimbal so that it stabilizes his camera. So he was very uh, enamored with it and he was using it. So I got to drive the whole way, whereas my husband was with our other son who just turned 16 and just got his uh, uh, learner's permit and he wasn't giving up. He was taking that second half. He drove the second half. My husband was very upset because it's so much fun. Now I drive a Jeep. That's what I drive every day. So this was like a Jeep on steroids. <laughs> it was so much fun. We had a blast. I met up with, there's donkeys all over this island, like everywhere. <laughs> um, let's see, what else did we do? Like I said, we ate a lot. We awaited New Year's Eve, which was so much fun. Our kids normally, because they're older, they normally go off and do their own thing on New Year's Eve. I don't remember the last time that the six of us were together on New Year's Eve and so we got to dance. Well, I hobbled because I still have issues with my leg. And we got to dance, there was a rock band playing. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And I did partake in quite a few alcoholic beverages on this trip. That's probably where I gained the weight. It is so easy. Um, I had mojitos flowing like, like nothing. <laughs> The, um, supposedly there's a difference between Mexican mojitos and Cuban mojitos. Mm, I guess the Mexican mojitos were, are much, much sweeter and the Cuban ones are not. And the Cuban ones are delish. And you know, you got the sun beating, it's hot and they just flow, they just flow. So uh, that's probably where I got all the five pounds. Let's see, what else? I really did not do any, a very little crochet. I did read, so that was a good thing. I have not been reading um, a lot in the last couple of years because I've been crocheting. Um, but this is, was, this was my um, uh, bag that I took on the trip. This was it, just this. And I'll show you how much I got done. I had a pattern picked out for this yarn, but I left it at home. And this is Sweet Georgia yarn, which is a Canadian, oh, I balled it up. Uh, so it's Sweet Georgia yarn. Um, let me see, what, did I, what is this? Uh, it's called Fauna. So I think I've showed it before. Anyway, uh, so it is a wool nylon mix, fingering. And I had a pattern picked out and I forgot it at home. So I thought, okay, I can do a fudget shawl. Just, you know, play along. Sorry, it needs to be blocked, but this is all I've got done. This is all I've got done. And so I'd start with, let's say, double crochet, then I switched to half double crochet, then I did the granny stitch, then I did some half double crochets, then some bobble stitches. And I call it fudget shawl because as long as you keep, you add the same on both ends, you'll be fine. It's the middle that, that would throw you off, but that's where all the fudging happens is in the middle. But that's all I got done. So I will work on it. Just haven't been in the mood. And I really did not, I spent a, my husband and I, cause the kids would go off. My husband and I actually had, it was like a honeymoon vacation. We got a lot of time together, you know, uh, without any uh, responsibilities. Uh, it was like a honeymoon. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> the only stipulation was grandpa or my father-in-law stipulated that everybody had to be at the dinner table because he reserved a table at 515. So that's a little earlier than what we normally eat, but we were all there, all dressed up every night and, uh, you know, pleased grandpa and then off we go. 
Now, Grandpa, uh, my mother-in-law passed away oh, just over two years ago, and uh, he was very, very lonely. And then recently, about two or three months ago, he found a friend. Um, and now this vacation was planned prior to him meeting this friend or uh, travel companion. Um, and then we had to convince her to come. And so the two of them, they were like lovebirds. They were off doing their own thing. It was absolutely fabulous. And I can't tell you how happy that made me because so my mother-in-law, uh, she passed away just over two years ago, but it was a long time coming. She suffered for a long, long time, um, years, decade. And he lived through it. He was there, like he is the bestest husband ever. Um, and it took, it, it hit him very, very hard when she passed. And uh, he deteriorated a little bit and it was hard to watch. Um, he's former military, so he's always been very active, and then the last two years, not so much. But this new lady friend has, I don't know, brought out a new spark in him. So it was wonderful to see. He seemed, uh, you know, he's getting on in years, and, and it's wonderful to see him smile again. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm just babbling on here. I'm not, I'm not going to stop that. Let's see what, uh, so I really got no crocheting done, um, on the trip. I did do some reading and acted like a love bird or a honeymooner with my husband, um, and spent a lot of time with our kids. Now did when we, we, we flew into Fort Lauderdale and that day I decided I'm going to go to, uh, Hobby Lobby. Boy, was that a disappointment. I walked out of there only spending $40. $40. I think it was like, I don't even know, eight skeins of yarn. And that's just because I couldn't leave with nothing. I, I'm in Florida, you know. Um, I was very disappointed. And then when I came back and I started watching the videos and I watched Zach Stout talk about the Hobby Lobby cakes, there wasn't a cake in the whole store. There were no cakes. The yarn aisle was literally one and a half rows. Extremely disappointing. Um, they were having a sale, 30% off everything, so that was okay. But there really wasn't much that I wanted. Uh, there was nothing particularly new to me that I was kind of hoping for. So that was a disappointment. Uh, but I did, like I said, and I made so much room in my luggage because I thought, I'm going to go to town and uh, I ended up carrying an empty, empty empty piece of luggage because there wasn't much that I was willing to spend my hard-earned money on so that was a bit of a dud I was uh, very disappointed in that I did google a Joann's but from where we were it was quite a distance so I didn't do that but since I've been back so we all came back the day we came back uh, grandpa's lady friend was sick and one by one we we're all falling like flies so uh, came back Saturday so Saturday and Sunday and pretty much yesterday I did nothing uh, but crochet and mindless crochet I started something a little more intricate couldn't think because my head feels like it's this big today is the first day that I actually feel a little normal Everybody else has got the sniffles, the coughing, the runny noses, the, uh, you know, I'm knock on wood. I'm kind of just, just the head, uh, and that's it. So I'm feeling better today. Um, so I really couldn't do anything intricate or anything challenging. I had to work on stuff that was easy, easy, easy. And even that it was, there were times where I'm going, I'm doing it, a, a, a granny shawl. And I messed up. Then you know I'm sick. So let's show you what I have done. When we were down in Florida, my daughters came to Hobby Lobby with me. And one of the yarns, my daughter, my older daughter, wants a shawl. A fairly big one. And she picked this yarn. And this yarn is, I love this yarn. 
100% acrylic. And the name is Nova Scotian Sky. And um, she loved it. Uh, problem is, two skeins only did that much. I don't know why. It seemed like two skeins would give you more, but I guess the granny stitch, stitch is, is, uh, takes up more yarn. So I added my favorite line brand jeans in the colorway brand new to the bottom. Now, the reason I added it is there's a color in here that is very close, almost exact to the Lime Brand jeans. Look at that. So I thought it looked good. So this I made this this uh, this weekend. Very mindless, very easy. Just did, 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 did. did that. So that will be shipped off to her very soon. She has requested quite a few shawls and blankets. So she has moved, and in the last month, she has moved from one province to the other and purchased a home. She has zero furniture. She doesn't even have dishes. She actually took possession. So she was flying out here on the 25th. She took possession of the house on the 21st of December. <laughs> and uh, so she slept on an air mattress for a couple of days and then flew out here. Um, so she has nothing, really nothing. She's got to start from scratch. Uh, when she sold her house here to move to St. John's, um, she sold everything. I mean, I have some of her boxes, but it's only like six boxes of personal memorabilia stuff. But anyway, so she, I guess a big thing in uh, Fredericton is electric heat. She wanted to stay in the downtown core. So an older home, uh, but it has been renovated. And so it's got electric heat, which means she's gonna be cranking down that um, thermostat because electric heat is expensive. Electricity is brutal. So she has requested tons of blankets and big shawls because she's gonna be walking around with blankets and shawls in her house. Anyway, all that rambling just to tell you that I'm gonna be making lots of shawls and blankets. It's turning out to be the year of the blanket so far it's only the beginning of january and i've already have i think eight that i have to make you know for my daughter and others so yeah anyway too much rambling okay the second thing that i made karen at happiness is homemade was talking about this um oh what did she call it what did she call it some sort of stitch it is called, oh, she's been making the hats. Um, oh. Man, for the life of me, I, I've forgotten the name of the stitch. But I will remember, or I will look it up and uh, post it down below. But I didn't, she was making hats and all kinds of other things. Uh, oh my goodness, I hate when memory goes. And I just decided, because like I said, I wanted something mindless, I made a little cowl. And look at the, the chunkiness of this yarn. So this yarn is also one that I bought, purchased in Fort Lauderdale. And it is Yarn B Watercolor Hues Cloudy Day. And it is a chunky, yeah, a really chunky yarn. So I made that. And it's actually really soft. It's like a roving. I don't know if you can see it. But it is super soft. I'm thinking it's going to felt a lot. Sorry. Oh man. I'm, I'm infringing on his space here. Um, anyway, it's a great stitch. Wish I could remember what it was. Um, I know you guys, you're all probably yelling at me going, tell me the name. But it's just out my head so anyway made that that was really quick like literally half an hour um, but I will look up the stitch and I will put it down uh, it's by Daisy Farm Crafts now go figure how do I remember the name of the uh, tutorial but I can't remember the name of the stitch and oh another thing that I made was so I am thoroughly in 
want to get a lot done for the Love Your Stash Cal hosted by Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet. And um, I want to use, oh, want to use, uh, sorry about that. Want to use up uh, as much as I possibly can for my stash. Um, so anyway, the first thing that I made was this, this toque. And it is fabulous. You have to use a striping yarn to get this effect, obviously. Uh, and I use Bernat Super Value Stripes in the colorway. Spice Stripes. Anyway, this is a great yarn. It's awesome. It's really, really uh, soft. And I just added a pom-pom. Now, this is called Give It a Whirl Hat. And for the life of me, I can't remember if I paid for this or not. But I will leave a link for that down below. Awesome. Let me tell you, it took me a while to figure out, because basically you, you, you crochet it in a, um, what do they call that, parallelogram? Like that. You kind of crochet it like that. And then the way you fold it, it turns into this. Now maybe because my head was like out to here and I was not feeling well, it took me forever to figure out how to fold it, to give this. Because I kept coming up with strikes going across like this. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> it took me a long time. Now this was my Christmas Eve uh, hookup, or as uh, Seta calls it, hook on. Um, hook on probably sounds a little more decent. <laughs> um, I started this and I finished the whole panel before I went away, but then all I did, all I had to do was uh, seam it together, fold it and seam it when I came back. And um, yeah, so that turned out really well. So it is a slouchy. The picture that I took for Instagram, um, I had my ponytail, so I was sticking up. I'm going, oh my God, I look like an elf or a troll. Anyway, I think it's cute. I like it a lot. Now you could also fold it up like this so that it gives you that uh, different dimension. Look at that. Is that not cute? I think it's adorable. Anyway, love it. I think I'm going to be making this again now that I figured out how to fold it. So that I made. And that I'm going to be submitting in the Love Your Stash Cal. Uh, for sure. Sorry, I'm very, very dry. Anyway, um, the other thing that I finally got around to doing was making my namesake pattern. I think you all know that I adore Seta, um, and she created a pattern, and she named it after me. Now, it is a paid-for pattern, but it's so nominal. If you would like it, I think you have to contact Seta directly. I'll leave her email address here and her channel link. I'm sure you all know Seta. Everybody knows Seta. Anyway, uh, finally got around to printing it and uh, making it. And let me tell you, I love it. The first one I made was using exactly what she said, number six bulky. And, it, and I was using, oh, this was from the yarn swap. Uh, and I think Karen was put this one in the box. I used so, so little of it to make this. So one of these cakes, you could make these and sell them like crazy. So and this one is Karen Sprinkle Cakes and Mocha Rainbow. Okay, so this is what it is, okay? Now, oh, I should have put it on away from the camera. Okay, now these buttons, they're a little big, but that's okay. These buttons were in a bag that Teresa from Teresa's little Teresa Little Trees Treasures gave me, and uh, I love this. Now, why I love this is keeps my neck warm. Okay, you, she also gives you an option of making this dip down a little further, but I'm quite happy with this. Why I love this is. You put it on and literally you fold it 
fits in your pocket. So, you know, you just, you want your neck protected when it's cold, when it's windy. Um, but then let's say you go to your doctor's office, you don't wanna sit there with that. Um, so you just put it in your pocket. That's why I love this. This is ingenious. So easy, it literally, I'm not exaggerating you, or exaggerating when I tell you that it took me 15, max 20 minutes to make. 20 minutes for the first one, the second one took me less than 20 minutes. So good. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I will be making a lot more and I will be sticking one in every coat jacket that I have in the pocket so that I'm never without. And I'm going to make them all like neutrally colors. So the second one that I made, oh my God, I love this yarn. This is King Cole Corona Chunky. I think I've showed this before. I love this stuff. Oh, but it is not a number six. So it came out uh, narrower and I'm happy with it, but I think I will be making, cause look at, look at how much you get left. I will be making another one and I'll make it a little wider, but you know what? You can actually, you don't even need to make, put the buttons in the front. You can put the buttons in the back. Very, very versatile. Back, side, uh, front, it's awesome. And look, look at this. Just folds up, fits in your purse, fits in your pocket, and I'm gonna be putting one in every, and I have a problem with jackets. I'm gonna do another video because I got tagged by Laurel at the Dabbling Hook to do 10 things video, 10 things about me, non-yarny things. And uh, one of the things is that I have a problem with shoes and jackets. Anyway, I have a lot of jackets, so I will be making one of these for every jacket that I own. Very good, very, very good. Uh, good job, Seta. Pattern is well written, um, easy to understand, um, and it's the Debbie. <laughs> so I love that. That's pretty much all I have done. Now, I did get a lot of yarn Oh, might as well show you. My mom spoiled me rotten. Look at these. All hand dyed by a local dyer. Funny thing is, I put in an order from the same local dyer before Christmas, and I got these. I have way too much yarn now. Way, way, way too much. I also ordered, oh, I keep kicking the camera. I'm so sorry. Um, I also ordered, I wanted to show you this. I ordered this yarn and I haven't opened it because it's from uh, a place called Sew Into Knitting, okay? And this is how it came. Oh my God, is this not fabulous? What a great way to save money on shipping. I love when um, people do this. So. I haven't opened it yet. I wanted to show you. I cannot open it now because it's sealed. But when I do open it, I will show you. I don't know if you can see it all. I, you're probably not going to get the colors, but it's got lime green and yellow and purple and black. It's awesome. But it's going to be interesting to see. I wonder if I can. Hmm. Haha. <laughs> Oh, look at these colors. Look at these colors. So this is how it came. Perfect. I do, I also got, so Zelda bought me um, a ball winder and a Swift. And when my mom, when I opened it up and I was like ecstatic, my mom was so upset. She went into her room and she's just moping. And after Christmas, she told me that she had bought me a wooden Swift. So uh, she was very upset, but that's okay, I'll use both. And my husband bought me a Swift as well, so now I have three. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is the yarn, and this is so into knitting. I believe she's Canadian as well. And she sent me a little uh, stitch marker, and it says, Knitting Diva. Hmm. Any of you knitters want, want this? Because <laughs> I don't knit. Um, yeah, so anyway, love this, love it. 
Anyway, that's what I've received. I, I received a whole bunch. Sorry about that. My camera decided to, I don't know, do something. Just stop. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to make this real quick. Um, I have no idea how long I've been yet yakking. Um, New Year's goals. I don't make New Year's goals because um, I have a lot of responsibilities and I don't want any more. I do not want to feel bad if I do not accomplish something. Uh, crochet is supposed to be fun. I am not about to start giving myself goals. You got to do this, you got to do that. For those people who it works for, yay! I wish it worked for me, but it does not. Uh, it's just another stressor. So I do not uh, do not make uh, crocheting goals, uh, but I do have a desire, one desire. I would love to maybe dye some yarn this year. Um, but again, I'm not putting it as a goal because if I get to the end of the year and I haven't dyed a piece of string, then I don't want to feel bad. So not uh not giving myself goals but i you know i wish i could i wish i could give myself goals i wish that it, it's the type of thing that it gives me uh, uh, a boost and a stamina but i'm not like that i yeah i don't do that i want to just go with the flow <laughs> whatever hits me i'm gonna do and then i don't feel bad um and that's and that uh, so I guess maybe I do have a, a goal. A goal is to not take so many commissions. Uh, commissions stress me. I want to do it the best way that I can in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of money, and it stresses me. So I don't want to do. Uh, I'm gonna try to cut back on the commissions. Um, yeah. That's it. Uh, 2019 is turning out to be a great year, minus the head cold thing. Um, I'm, I missed everyone. You know, I, was, I am too cheap to buy the internet package. So I was the only one of our group who didn't have a phone, didn't have access to internet, didn't have access to all of you, all of you podcasters. Uh, didn't check any, any messages or anything. I was completely, completely unplugged. And you know what? I survived. I survived quite well. It was great. Um, now, after this, I'm going to do another video. I will post them both on the same day. Uh, I just want to keep them separate. Um, yeah, so the, the second video will be the tag that Laurel tagged me in. Um, what else? I think this will be the year of the giveaway, actually, because I've got some ideas um, floating around in my this shell here. So, yeah, and I love, I love giving stuff away. <laughs> My husband doesn't like it, but I do. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everyone, absolutely everyone who has commented that they missed me. I missed you all too. I love connecting. I'm still trying to catch up on all the comments. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been binge watching everybody over the last few days that I've been home. I cannot comment a lot because for some reason my iPad doesn't want to let me. So I would actually, to comment, I would have to watch the videos on my laptop and I don't use my laptop a lot. Well, you get it. You understand. So I, but I have been watching. I have been watching. So I will be back in a few days. Um, I have a couple of whips uh, in progress and I'm sure they'll be done in a few days. I will be back and uh, we'll chat some more. Talk soon.